Welcome to the Look Good, Move Well podcast. All right, everyone, welcome back. What are we bantering about today? Uh, what's your favorite summer activity? Ooh, man. Um, well, I just recently got back into playing a little bit of golf. Oh, yeah. And I haven't really explored this yet, but summertime evening twilight golf is pretty special. It's like at the end of a hot day when things are starting to cool off and there's still a lot of sunlight, but like most people are like home and like doing the dinner thing and the golf course is like empty and playing golf at that hour is just like magical. There's just, you don't have to wait for people. You can kind of play fast. You can get a lot of, a lot of holes in really quickly. Um, you know, you can see the ball until like 9 PM, mm. which is wild. Um, so yeah, summertime evening, twilight golf. That's my thing. That sounds magical. It is. It's, it's lovely. Mm. And we live now we, we moved recently to a house that is you know, just about a block away from a golf course. So every day I drive past a golf course on the way to and from home. And whenever I'm out in the car at like 6.30 or 7 coming home and like the course is empty and it's bright and the grass is green and it just looks so peaceful and pleasant out there, I'm just like, oh, I should be on the golf course not doing bedtime routine right now. <laughs> <laughs> Babe, take the kids home. <laughs> Drop me off here. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get out, kids. Drive yourself home. <laughs> what about you? I also really enjoy that twilight hour. I don't really like getting out and doing a lot of summer activities because I'm not a person who does well in the heat at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I love that late evening sitting on my porch mm -hmm. in my swing with a little beverage, just observing. What's nature. the beverage you're having? Could be a glass of Lille could be just a sparkling water. Mm. I don't know. Depends. Could be a cocktail. Sounds nice. A fresh up vodka lime gimlet, a margarita, a Paloma. I'm sure there's people listening that you're like, they are, you're speaking their language yeah, yeah. right now. Yeah. You guys know what's up. You know what's up. <laughs> Me, I'm like, I'm like, what did, was that English? What did you just say? <laughs> Lee Lit? Lille. Lille, what's that? It's a fortified white wine. It's really delicious oh. on ice in the summer. Fortified with fortified with like vitamins it's and minerals not and like, vitamins like a and healthy with thing. more booze. <laughs> more a booze fortified. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. It's like white wine plus. White wine. And nice. You put an orange slice in there. Oh, um, solid. It's really nice. Yeah. Great. Cool. And actually my backyard is about to get redone next month, so I'm really excited to sit out there. Solid. I told them, I don't care what you do. I just don't want it to use up any water since we're in a drought. And I want those pretty little bistro string lights somewhere. There you go. Then just do your magic. Just do your thing. I'm sure they love to hear that. Yeah. I was like, I kill all plants. So just give me something real low maintenance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How would you like us to work the way that you do it best? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm not a it. landscaper. It's yeah. like, you know, it's <laughs> why like, I do. <laughs> yes. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's topical. So like, it's summertime. You mm -hmm. want to go and take advantage of all of this wonderful, wonderful daylight that you have and hopefully good climate wherever you are. Those of you who are Australian and Southern Hemisphere listeners who are just starting the first day of winter, this might not be for you. <laughs> <laughs> but no, 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 no. The topic is how do we, hey, I want to be outside. I want to be doing things. I want to be taking advantage of life. And, you know, two hours in the gym feels just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right in the summer. I mm -hmm. want it to be like effective, efficient workout so that I can go and enjoy my outdoor activities. So today we're, we're talking about minimal effective dose. What, what do you need to do in the gym? And, and then, and then I said, well, what is minim, minimal effective dose in the gym in order to do what? Like what, what's, what are we trying to, what are we trying to maintain or, or hold on to? Yeah. And I said, your slabs of beef, <laughs> <laughs> your meaty slabs of beef muscle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how do you maintain slabs of beef? <laughs> yeah, that's right. With minimal effort. <laughs> you worked hard to get those beef slabs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Gotta hang on to them while you go enjoy yourself. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. So I think it's, it's always important to set the context for you know, we want to go in and we want to be as efficient as possible. Like this is like the, this, 
the eight minute abs, you know, can you really do eight minutes of abdominal exercise, you know, daily and have the movie star physique that you saw on the infomercial? Mm-hmm. Is that real? Like, you know, it, maybe for a few people it, it's effective, um, but, you know, that probably isn't going to work for the vast majority of, of people. Probably. Um, you know, well, so what, what is what does it need to be? Does it need to be 20 minutes? You know, do we need to get in the gym for 45 minutes? Do I need to have at least an hour in the gym? How many days a week does that need to happen? Um, and I think it's pretty clear that, like, what... I think there's been a an energy inside of the fitness community that has kind of... And a, and a message that has led people to believe, like, in order to have the great physique and hold on to the great physique, I need to do all of this stuff. And I, I would say that uh, pro- I'm, I'm probably guilty at times of perpetuating that because I love to do a lot of things. I love to move and I've loved to explore fitness. And for, for me at different phases, that's felt like my happy place. It's feeling less, not less of my happy place, but like less of the place that I want to invest all my added time, you know, currently. So I'm kind of in the camp of like, well, what, what do I need to do? You know, and how many days a week do I need to do it to like maintain, you know, the, the hard earned muscle and strength and, you know, quote unquote gains that I've had over the years. And so I'm looking into that too, right now for myself and, you know, with anything, it's like, it's going to be different for each person to a certain extent, you know, if we're talking I don't, I don't think people are um, generally talking about just like how do I maintain muscle? It's like they want to maintain their overall look. Their physique. Their yeah. physique, yeah. right? Well, um, I think it matters too, like how are you going to be spending the, the extra time? And we're, we're talking about this in the context of it's summer, it's time to get outdoors and do stuff. But for some people, like getting outdoors and doing stuff in summer is like going to barbecues and drinking beer and drinking, you know, alcohol and and then eating, you know, eating lots of different foods. Yeah. And so in that case, like if you're going to trade gym time to go and consume more alcohol and food than you typically would, then, you know, we have to be honest about that. It's like, okay, well, doing less in the gym and doing more you know, socializing and consumption, it's not going to, it's not going to balance out to like you maintaining your physique. We could give you a minimum effective dose to maintain the muscle, but you might also gain some fat along the, along the summer. But if you're out walking the golf course, you know, going on hikes, going surfing, being in the pool, you know, being really active, then yeah, you could probably stand to do a lot less in the gym and still maintain the same activity level, if not more activity, keep your physique. But what does that time in the gym have to entail? Like, what do you need to get done when you're in there? And that's, I think, what we're going to talk about today is like, these are the, these are the, this is the bare minimum. Mm-hmm. Um, now, in terms of frequency, is, am I on the right track here? Is there anything else you would add to that? Yeah, I would add just one more thing, which is that... I think that there is a trend in fitness that I've seen where a lot of programs and hey, we may well be one of them very soon, um, but a lot of programs are releasing like, okay, here's the 60 minute version, here's the 40 minute version, here's the 30 minute version, here's the 20 minute. And it's not necessarily about shrinking it all down to the fastest possible workout or the least amount of time. I think that just a little bit more context is that it's about the balance of having options to do at different times of your life. I think if you get into a mode where you really want to go after a physical goal, whether that's body composition related or strength related performance, you are going to need to invest some more time. And there are lots of ways that we provide to do that. Um, So it's just about having more options on the menu to pick and choose from based on how you want to allocate your time. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And I think that, It's not just like options on a day-to-day level, although that is important. Hey, I only have 40 minutes today or today I'm going to spend an hour and a half in the gym. But it's also, you know, seasons of life, you know, phases of life. And that has been certainly a message that has come through a question is, hey, it's summertime. Like, 
I saw you're doing these pump 40 workouts. Like I'd love to have access to those because that would really help me out. Like I want to be playing with my kids or doing, you know, I think I got a couple dad, dad messages being like, Hey, I really want to get out there with do stuff with my kids in the summer. Um, so I completely understand that that's like a phase, you know, and then they're going to be back in school in the fall and they're not going to be doing that as much. So maybe you're going to be back on the, you know, training program that dedicates a little bit more of your time in the gym because that's where you find happiness. Yeah. And then there's also the person who's like, I, I actually, my only goal is to just like maintain this. Like I'm not here to like, you know, win anything or add 10 pounds of muscle or get stronger. Like I'm, I just want to maintain, do I need to be training for an hour to 90 minutes, five days a week? And the, and the short answer is no, you don't, but let's, let's break down like, well, what, what does need to happen? And then if you reduce the amount of time that you're training, then what are the consequences of that in terms of your physique? Because it then changes maybe your activity level changes your total, you know, your total body energy expenditure. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And maybe, um, so let's start, let's start with the, sort of the, the first part, which is like, if we just talk about, you know, what is physique, what is your physique? Your physique is two things. It's how much body fat do you have on your body? How much muscle mass do you have? That's what makes you look a particular way. You could get into like the nuances of like proportionality, like, you know, are your legs big enough or your traps big enough your calves big enough and you can definitely like bias certain pot body parts to like develop them more so you can have like bigger shoulders or you know bigger legs or bigger calves um but let's just say you like are balanced and you follow like a balanced training program that kind of targets and hits every muscle group you know evenly then 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 it really is like well, how much do you need to stress the muscles so that they maintain their size or grow. Those are kind of the two options or shrink. It's like shrink, maintain, or grow. Mm -hmm. And then how do you impact fat mass? How do you get rid of fat? You know, and what, what circumstances or situations increase the amount of fat that you have in your body and what keeps it about the same. And if we can really understand those things from a training perspective and then oh, training, plus activity not related to training, how you move your body outside the gym. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, you know, the calorie or food consumption equation. If you can understand that, then at any phase of life, you can really adjust these variables to fit what feels right to you. It's like, hey, I know that 40 minutes of training, three days a week, if I hit it in this way, is gonna maintain my muscle. And if I drop down to 40 minutes a week, 40 minutes, three days a week of training, but I'm also walking this many steps a day because I'm out being active. I can eat this much and I look this way. Like if you have these variables and you have the answers to some of these questions, um, or at least a framework to think about it, then it can be really liberating. And you can like, you know, you don't have to feel like, oh, like I got to hit the gym, like 90 minutes, like, ah, oh, I hurt. Like my friends are going to the pool, but like, I got to hit the gym. So I don't like I look good when I get to the pool, like, you know, <laughs> everyone's gone. <laughs> right. Um, might give you, it might give you like kind of a, f a feeling of like, oh, I can, I can get out. Yeah. Yeah. I think that controlling for all of the different variables and understanding the relationship is definitely empowering to be able to get out and not feel like you're missing something that's going to have a negative effect. Yeah. yeah. Well, from a muscle, from, from, from the muscle side of things, you know, we, we basically have to, uh, hear the inputs. You have to resistance, you know, do some resistance training. And when you train muscle, you are going to have to push that m muscle and that group of muscles to a, sp a specific like effort level in order for it to like want to at least maintain its size. Yeah. Um, if you're, and what we've done is we've kind of like, uh, to try and put a number to it or a way to like a language to it, we're using like the RPE or rate of perceived exertion scale. And that is typically something between zero and 10, 10 being, um, 
we'll call it absolute failure, like you cannot contract the muscle anymore uh, underneath the load, and zero being super easy. Seven and above, six or seven and above, is where we start to think of like things getting somewhat challenging in weight training. You know, if you're doing like a, if it's like five effort and you're doing like weights, you're just warming up. It's like, there's nothing hard about it, but you're like pushing against weight. Mm -hmm. Six or seven is sort of like, I can always execute perfect form. I can always, like I can control everything about this lift. And even up to the last rep, like I feel in control, you know, you're, you're working in the six to seven range. Yep. What people will say is that if you have, if you're at six or seven out of 10, then you have about four repetitions left in the tank at the end of a set. Mm -hmm. And that seems so arbitrary, but it's like, if you're doing sets of five in the back squat, you finish your fifth rep, but you could have done nine or 10 reps, then just, you know, that doesn't feel that heavy. Yeah. feels like I had perfect technique, like everything was dialed in. I never felt like I was struggling. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's six to seven out of 10. Then we get into the eight or nine out of 10. Eight or nine out of 10 is where you're now, you're starting to, you're basically like, you're one to two reps away from failure. Yep. Which is usually where things, some, you're, you're giving enough effort where like, you're having like, <laughs> your brain has two modes I've experienced in weightlifting. It's like, I've got like the brain, the side of my brain that can like think about how to move the, the body and like control the movement. And then I got the other side of the brain that's just like, just push hard, just bring it and <laughs> lift it, you know? And like, I try and lift with like a little bit of both. But when, when the side of my brain, that's just like, just push the fucking weight. Like when it takes over, that's when I'm like, I'm at that eight or nine. At, I'm like, I'm approaching nine out of 10. Yeah. Cause I'm like, I don't want to think about like, and, and I, Nate was kind of filming me do some cyclist squats today. And there was like a point where I started to like, just grunt and just be like, I got to get through this set. And that was like, okay, I'm definitely there. You yeah. Know? That's how I can tell for myself. It's like when I start to make involuntary noises. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Definitely at the eight mark. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So when you hit that eight or nine out of 10, that is the level of effort that your muscles need to like, hey, it's time to, uh, like something crazy just happened <laughs> and I need to adapt Yeah, because apparently this maniac wants to go and do this <laughs> and so we got to be ready next time, right? Yeah. That's what our body does. Like we get a stress and it, it kind of formulates a systematic response to that stress like this is how I'm going to deal with this. So next time it doesn't feel like I'm, you know, going to die. Um, and that could be like from a food we ate or going in the cold plunge or hot sauna or a heavy cyclist squat. I've got the Oh No song playing in my head right now. That's <laughs> what nice. your muscles are saying. Yes. <laughs> so now once you hit that eight out of nine, that becomes a question of like, well, how much of that do I need to do to to maintain my muscle, mm -hmm. you know? Do I just do one eight out of nine set per muscle a week? Is that enough? You know, and then how much of those eight or nine out of 10 sets do I need to do to like grow the muscle, to make them bigger, you know, to really fill out my body? And because I didn't touch on it, like what is 10 out of 10? You know, it's like, does it make sense to go beyond eight or nine out of 10? The research says it's not necessary. It doesn't do any added benefit for your muscle gain and strength. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, unless you compete in a sport where you need to maximize and max out, like there will be times to push at a 10. Um, so you might want to expose yourself to those environments. But if you're not, then eight or nine out of 10 does all the work that you need. And, and, that eight or nine out of 10 is like, you're working hard, but you're not close to form, uh, uh, to failure, absolute failure. And you're stopping before your form completely breaks down. Yeah. So you're staying in a safe zone. So don't, don't, uh, and I think people mistake like working out safely and smartly and like, you know, working sub maximally, um, they mistake that with like, it's going to be easy. Right. It's like, no, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard and very difficult, but you're not going to get sloppy with your form. 
And uh, so if we're sticking to that eight or nine out of 10 and we're looking at muscle maintenance, then really it's about like, if you can find two times a week to hit each muscle group, then you're, you're going to be good. And you need to do like a couple sets of hard effort, you know, like that, that mm-hmm. we just discussed. And that, that should be sufficient. Now, if you're like, if you've got 150 pounds of lean mass on your body, like muscle, which is huge. I think I have like 90 to 92 pounds of muscle mass on my body. So as a reference point, like somebody who's hulking out, like you might need a little bit more than what I'm saying to maintain, right? It is a product of like how much muscle you have. But um, yeah, if you can get in the gym and do two, two, two tough sets per body, per body part, you know, twice a week, then you're, you're going to be able to maintain. And that could look like two days in the gym per week, full body workout, Mm -hmm. and you're getting all the muscle groups and all the movement patterns and body parts, like you're hitting them at that effort. Now to do a full body workout where you're getting two sets with each muscle group, like that might take an hour, 75 minutes, but that's maybe 90 minutes, but that's twice a week. So three hours a week in the gym and you, and you got it like, great. That might be a shock to some people. Like, yeah. whoa, that's not that much, you know? Um, but you don't have to do it in two days. You could do it in four days. Yep. That's three hours. That's three, four, 45 minute sessions. You do, you know, two upper body days, two lower body days. That's, you can knock out a ton of effort in those 45 minutes if you're just trying to hit, you know, the major mu- muscle groups for lower body and upper body. And, yeah, I mean, quick plug into like, well, that was what I was looking at when I, I've been writing this pump 40 plan. Yeah. It's like, yeah, there's two upper body days, and two lower body days. And we do like a quick prep session and then we hit intensity supersets and then we do strength balance supersets and we're done. That's it. And it's done in 40, 40 minutes, you know? Right. And so minimal effective dose to maintain, but possibly even grow in that circumstance because in that format that i laid out like there's opportunity for more than two sets at that effort Mm -hmm. there's opportunity for up to six or eight sets each day per body part you know at that effort it's just a question of like how hard do you want to push in the gym right do you want to conserve some of your energy like for when you leave the gym because a weight training session where you come in and you do 10 super hard lower body leg sets, yeah, it might only take you 25 minutes or 30 minutes to do those 10 sets, but you're going to be pretty cooked. Yeah. Like to work that hard for 10 sets is, is exhausting. And I'm not talking about doing a Metcon or conditioning at the end of it. Like it's hard to lift that heavy, that hard. That's why, that's why bodybuilding is a hard sport right it's because if you really want to grow and make the muscles bigger and stronger and fuller and change your physique you got to lift hard and heavy not maximally not to failure but you got to push it and it's it takes it you know you're the the part of your brain that will switch on when it's like holy fuck i got to push it really hard like that's that's going to be on most of the time yeah which it drains you yeah so Anyway, th- that's kind of, I mean, that's starting to give some like practical, you know, numbers to this. Yeah. Oh yeah. I love something practical. It's like two tough sets, two times per week per yep. body part. Yeah. Easy to remember. So. And, and excuse me, on the way to your tough sets, remember you're building up. And so you're doing a couple sets in that six to seven range too. Right. Right. So you might do four or five sets per body part. But it's like those last two, like... That's where you hit it. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask you about because I was going to ask if you're approaching a pump 40 style workout, knowing that you want to get out and about during the summer, how do you... Walk me through it a little bit, how you approach your sets. Because you're not just like coming in, loading up the bar, like at an eight, you know, on set one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the idea was like, you know, how do we efficiently get to eight or nine out of 10? Right. Like, how long does it really take me to come in the gym and prepare my body for some effective, hard sets? And 
I was just like, what's the minimum time frame I can achieve that in? So I've got like one, one of the training formats in pump 40 is they all start with a pre fatigue pump, which is basically two exercises that are focused on the body parts that we're training that day. So if it's like leg day, there'll be two lower body pre fatigue movements and come in and do like high volume, like 20, 30 reps of hip thrust at a light weight and then go and do 20 reps of, you know, uh, hamstring curls or leg extensions or Pollock step ups or lateral band walks, like some, you know, kind of warm up, but low loading, you know, a lower body movement for high rep. So what that does drives a ton of blood to the area, gets range of motion, starts to like kind of grease the grease the wheels a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's like a very fast and effective way to get a warm up in. Now it kind of goes, it doesn't include any cardio. It doesn't include like, um, added range of motion work or specific stability work that might be good for the, you know, for like an optimal training session. But I'm like, I'm looking at what's the minimum effective way to get into a session. We might be leaving a couple things, you know, on the table in terms of performance, in terms of optimizing like the training session. Yeah. But this is a, this is a great way to start and also gets the mind into it. Then we go right into like the first in, intensity superset. And so again, I'm using supersets because it's, we're, we're short on time and we want to be, we, or we want to minimize the amount of time that we're there. And this allows me to hit two different movements back and forth, back and forth that give me a little bit of rest in between and kind of spread the workout over my body so that I can actually fit more work into a shorter amount of time. But I provide myself with a sufficient number of sets that will allow me to just jump right in and start doing like one warm up set. So I have like my first set with the with the weight is like warm up five out of ten. Then my next two sets are like six and seven out of ten. And then my last two sets are eight and nine out of ten. And that allows me to hit my two high, high effort sets and get there pretty quickly by just using the pre fatigue and the movements themselves to, to warm me up. Um, there, there are some other formats inside of pump 40 that kind of give me even more sets to ramp up and to get to something like really intense, but that's pretty much the format. And then once I've like hit those, the big movements, the big compound movements of the day at that high effort, then I'm going to like kind of back off a little bit, change the movements and finish with a three movement giant set at the end for a few sets. I'm already like warmed up. I've already given a ton of effort. My muscles and my brain have been like kind of fatigued and hit the major muscle groups. So now when I move into the last, you know, three exercises that I'm going to do two to three sets of, I'm like, I'm already there. I don't need any more ramping up or warming up. Like those are going to be super effective sets right out of the gates. And then I can be done. And I've been able to spread that out. So, you know, using your pre fatigue and then making sure you have enough time on your core movements of the day to sort of warm up, to get to your like tough working sets and not have to like add in like 10 extra warm up sets just to get ready for it is important. And so that's how we, how I designed it. That's the mentality that I have is everything from the moment I walk in the gym is all preparation for those like super hard, you know, compound super sets back and forth of hitting eight, nine out of 10 effort, at which point I get to move on to my last, you know, three sort of accessory strength balance exercises that are going to be, you know, hard, quick, efficient, and then I'm done. Yep. And where does conditioning fit in? Yeah. So this is like an area that somebody, um, you know, it's, we were, we, we started off by saying like, well, what's the goal? It's to just maintain muscle. Yeah. So if you're just trying to maintain muscle, then cardio is, is not the thing that's going to impact that. Mm -hmm. You got to lift weights and you got to lift weights hard. And the way that we're lifting weights in this format back and forth, supersets, sometimes EMOMs, lots of EMOMs or every 90 second formats, that is highly aerobic. So there's, there is a good amount of aerobic or cardio that's built into the weight training. Where a lot of people love to use conditioning or cardio is to 
support their energy balance. Like if I do some cardio, I'm burning more calories, which is going to help me to maintain the body composition that I want. Remember, this is the fat mass equation now. It's like if you if you if you all if everyone lifts the same amount in a week, but then these people do a little bit more cardio than this group, that cardio group is burning more energy. Yeah. And they're lifting the weights. So they got the muscle plus a little bit of extra energy expenditure means they either get to eat more food or they get to lose more body fat. Yeah. And they might be leaner. We have a feeling and I have a strong feeling that cardiovascular fitness is just vital to well being. It makes everything feel better. Mm -hmm. It's what we all should be striving for on a weekly basis. And so thinking about that person who's like, I'm going to get out of the gym and go be active. Well, then you're doing your cardio out there. You're doing your slow, steady state hikes. You're doing more walking. Maybe you're playing a sport like a beach volleyball. Maybe you're, uh, you know, you're, you're doing active things yeah. at the pool. And so you're getting a lot of activity extra activity and you know low intensity activity or cardio in that's totally fine if you're somebody who's like i want the minimal effective dose of the you know weight training and then i also want a little minimal effective dose of like my cardio like well then you can create a step count that you're going to hit every single day in that in that summertime and that's maybe it's eight thousand steps a day or ten thousand steps a day whatever it might be um or you want to do a short, you know, traditional functional bodybuilding cardio session. And you want to do that twice a week or three times a week. Uh, and those are going to take 30 minutes. That's what we've, we've, we have that. We have that. We've <laughs> yeah. given those, you know, we've done the 30, 30 cardio challenge. We have that ebook inside of persist for all of our members. You know, that's something you can just quickly pull out and be like, I'm going to hit one of these. I'm not in the gym as much as I was before. I'm doing four days a week and I'm only dedicating 45 minutes in the gym. So I'm going to just plug in this cardio twice a week yep. or three times a week or whatever else. Um, so those that would be a way to kind of inject some cardio in there if you're not just getting it outside the gym. So that's going to help you maintain your muscle. If you're outside being active, that's going to help you maintain your energy balance and keep the body fat down or keep the, the physique that you're, you know, that you want. If you want to just maintain your muscle, but you also want to go and, you know, be at the pool parties and be drinking a little bit more and having more like, you know, indulgent barbecues, then just know that you're, you're kind of trading a little bit of activity for a little bit more consumption. And that can make you, you know, gain a little bit of weight too, on top of that, gain a little body fat. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, I think the two by two rule would be also very useful for if you do like to be in the gym for longer sessions and training is just your jam, but there are just days when it just gets chaotic and you know that you don't have time for a whole workout. And so you can adapt what you're doing to just, hey, I'm just, I want to make sure that I just check a box in a way that's actually going to be effective for my goal right now. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a, um, yeah. And, and, and I just really want to emphasize the effort level, yes. right? It's like, you know, I'm going to come in and do like two sets of just like chill leg extensions on the it's machine. Like, oh, yeah. That's not what we mean. Like, yeah, no. Because remember, in order to get to two really tough sets of anything, you had to have done three to six sets, you know, before that, that were less tough. Yep. Which is work. You know, and you're ramping yourself up to those. And there were like, you know, bodybuilders in back in the day who truly like they, uh, I mean, I won't go into the details of this, but there was a whole group of bodybuilders in the golden era of bodybuilding who really believed in one set a day, maximal, like, and this was like, they were going t 11 out of 10. Yeah. Like it was, it was forced reps beyond failure sometimes with, you know, a partner assisting them, mm -hmm. drop sets, like all the different methods to try and make this the most like, and they did, you know, but this was like, they would spend an hour preparing for that. And then it was, okay, we're doing this incline bench press and like, I'm not stopping until I die yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. And that one mega set built one of the greatest physiques of all time in like Dorian Yates. Mm -hmm. So, you know, don't 
don't mistake this idea of like, oh, I just need to do one set and I'm good to go. It's like you need to do two tough sets. But in reality, to get to those two tough sets, if you know that that's the focus, then everything you do to get there is just like, okay, I got to just be focused on what I'm doing, dialed in, get my pre-fatigue, get my warm-up sets going. Okay, that's six out of seven. I'm okay. I'm, I'm getting close. Boom. Here I go. Everyone shut up. Like, turn your freaking <laughs> notifications off. Like, I'm going into the, I'm going into the tunnel, right? It's not my chit-chat time. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And you're going to be making some noise. Yes. You're going to be sweating, shaking. Yes. 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 All of the things. I mean, that's what we did today. Like, I know. I got here a I, little I late am. and it was like, I wasn't really a friendly guy at the gym nope. when I showed up. Everyone nope. was like chit chat and like, yeah, go. And got little Addison over there doing <laughs> his thing. And I'm just like, <laughs> oh, I gotta get there. I gotta go lift his weights. I gotta go in the tunnel. We gotta go. <laughs> yep. Sometimes it's like that. Yeah, it's all right. All right. Okay. Well, happy summer, everybody, and winter to you down under. And uh, we we love your questions. We love all the things that you're sending in and giving us ideas on what we should be asking uh, each other and talking about on this podcast. So please don't stop. Go over to our DMs at Satya Khan at Marcus Philly, functionalbodybuilding.com. Let us know what you'd love to hear about. Yeah, and maybe by the time this podcast comes out, we will have Pump 40 available for you. So you can always check that out on our website. I imagine we could try and make that happen. Yeah, it depends on how, if I want to work this weekend. <laughs> uh, you have three, you have, yeah, yeah. Yep, yeah. yep. The answer is... Yes. <laughs> if not, work. it will be out soon. <laughs> yeah, coming soon to a to a internet near you. Exactly. Okay. Thanks, everyone. All right. Bye. Thanks, Nate. Yeah.